Hello and welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick and we're playing Stationeers. Now it's been brought to my attention that some people seem to think that my base is a bit of a mess. Don't see it myself. Everything's perfectly in order. That's where stuff goes. That's where ingots go. Maybe it's a mess. I see the problem. It's these machines. They're taking up too much space. It's all their fault. But, you know, I, I am getting a bit sick of transferring ingots between machines. And I really need stackers on there so I don't have big piles of cables and pipes and things popping out. So I think it's about time that today we had a bit of a build and we put a little inventory management system in to look after our printers. Now, as with most of this stuff, it's not so much a case of getting the automation right. It's actually deciding what you wanted to do in the first place. So, here's the plan. We have a circulating chute system, which is a yellow system. It goes around through all the sorters, back to the start and circulates. Now the sorters will separate out the ingots, and feed them out the back into the input of the printer. Anything the printer puts out, print out, and coach them back, join in through a junction, back into the main circulating system. Right, the sorter will have to know when the printer is open, it doesn't want ingots. So everything's going to have to shoot straight through. When it is active, it knows that any ingots coming up through here have to be pushed into the machine. So the sorter has to be aware of the printer. Now, of course, we have to have a way of getting what we've printed out of the system. We don't want it to go around forever. So I'm going to need another sorter, which is attached to a stacker. That's the task we've got set. I hope that made sense. It made sense in my brain anyway. But my brain's a weird place to be some days. Let's get building. Now, take a look at our sorter. We have a few properties on there. We have a lock, a mode, on and an output. Now, the Stationeers Wiki does have some good information for us on sorters here. It tells us that the mode, it does control which, which way it works. Now, mode 2 is setting it to logic mode. Now, as we're using it with logic chips there, I'm taking a guess and saying that's the one we're going to be wanting. Now, the output will define which port it goes to. Uh, so it'll be, be a 0 for the front one and 1 for the rear one and it does reset itself after each action. So it won't just keep using the same port once we've used it, it will reset. Okay, so for, for our code, we've just aliased our sorter to, to pin D0. So we're gonna connect our sorter, sorter to pin D0 on the chip. And just as our setup, just our one-off, we've saved the sorter mode and set it to two. Now this one's supposed to be the logic, logic control. Drop something in. Okay, and it's not come out. So I'm guessing we need to put our output command there to tell it which output to put it out. So we just now we just save sorter output command one. So we still haven't got a loop here, so we'll just do this once and then the program will stop. So it should output it to output one, which I'm guessing is probably the rear one. Confirm, export it. And there we go, it popped out. Now we're not in a loop here, so it shouldn't repeat that. Okay, so it hasn't. So another test, if our theory is right, output zero should put it to the front one. Confirm, export. Ah, rock and roll. We're doing good. Now, so we've just got to find out what's actually in there. So we'll hook up a slot reader and see what's in there. So our slot reader hooked up, we connect it to the sorter, switch him on. Uh, so let's just take a wild stab and say it's the input we're looking for. Uh, let's hope that class tells us a bit about what it is. It says zero, that doesn't really help us. Quantity, well, the quantity is two, so that's definitely the one we're looking for. Spit that out and try something else. Okay, a cable is now import class 17. So there is something there, whether the lights just don't have an import class. 
or what it is. Spit him out again. Try an ingot. Ingot is class 19. A uh, different ingot. Copper. Class 19. Handy. Uh, we got silver. Class 19. I think we're on a winner here. So, if we check the slot to find out if the input class is 19, we might be looking for ingots. So we'll set up a loop and see what happens. So, here we go. Now, I've hooked up a light to D1, just as a visual indicator to let us know when it's actually found an ingot. Okay, so the code we've added in the loop, so we've loaded a slot, and we're storing the value into variable R0, it's our temporary variable. So we're loading from the sorter slot 0, so once again it's set on our slot reader that's slot 1, but of course they're, they're numbered differently here, so instead of being numbered 1 to 4, in the code they're numbered 0 to 3. So slot 1, which we now call slot 0 here, the, we're loading the class and storing it into variable R0. If R0 set equal, so if R0 equals 19, our temporary variable, our variable we've called ingot, which is R1. So if R0 equals 19, set our variable to 1. If not, set it to 0. So we're saving, back to that one, the output. We're saving a value, either true or false. So we go to either the front or the rear one, depending on whether or not it's found an ingot. And then we're just switching the light on or off if it's found an ingot. So, that's how it should work. Let's give it a go. Export. So, it's not giving me any errors, which is good. So if I put something in there, it comes out the front. Anything else? Out the front, right here, ingot. Give us a light, it comes out the back. We have a different ingot. Gives us a light that comes out the back. Good oh. Okay, so that's got the machine sorting, sorting the ingots from everything else. But now we want it to be able to recognise if our machine is open or not. So I'll hook that up to D3. We've added the printer in, we've assigned that to pin D2. We've created a new variable here called active. That'll just tell us whether or not the printer is active and wanting ingots. Now the new lines we've put into the code, so we've just loaded into a temporary variable R0, the printer, and the status of the open. Now if the open is 0, it's active, it wants, it wants ingots. If it's 1, it means the machine's open and it should, it's inactive. So then we set equal to 0, active. So if active, we, we're going to check if R0 is equal to 0, and store the result in active. So if it is zero, true, active becomes one. So now we only want to send it to the rear output if the machine is active and it's an ingot. Everything else goes to the front. So we're taking the minimum value, which is effectively an AND command. So if either of them is zero, R zero will go to zero, which means we don't want it in the machine. If it is both active and it is an ingot, then the minimum command will be 1, which will return a true and the output will go to the rear of 1. We've still got our light telling us whether or not it's an ingot. Right now, so that will hopefully work. Confirm, export it. So now the machine is closed, so we are active in what we're doing. So it should take the ingots to the rear opening. That is not an ingot, it goes to the front. That is an ingot, it goes to the back. It's a different ingot, it still goes to the back, that's good. So now if we open this, oops, make a mess, they should all go to the front now. So if we grab an ingot, it knows it's an ingot, and it sends it to the front. 
That's good. Junk still goes through the front. The machine we've got sorting out for our stacker doesn't have a machine attached to it. We want that one to always split everything, regardless. So, that won't have a machine attached, so it will throw an error from the IC when it can't read the machine. So, we'll have to do a bit of jiggery-pokery to get that to work. We now have two new lines of code. Now, the bottom one is a branch relative. So, it will skip a number of lines based from where this is. Branch relative device not set. So if the printer is not set as a device on the chip, instead of throwing an error, it will now complete this one. And the command is a branch relative, so skip three lines. Two and three. So it's skipping the skipping the lines where it decides whether or not there is a where skipping the lines where it tries to read the printer and jumps straight down to the end statement. Now we want it to always set. So before we do that jump, we just move active, we move the value of 1 into the active command. So we're just going to say it is, that we do are going to split off the ingots. If there's a printer attached, it will then go check it and see if it really does want it. If there's no printer attached, just pretend there is, jump straight to the end statement and can carry on. Now if I disconnect the printer, we should still function, it's not throwing an error. Now it should split everything. So ingots should always go to the back. Junk should always go to the front. So now that we've got it working all the way I want it to, I don't really need a light on anymore. So I'm just going to put a hash in front of that one. It turns it into a comment, so it will no longer try and read it. So now I can remove the light and it won't throw an error. You can leave it on there, paint it different colours for Christmas and have flashy lights if you like. But I'm just going to get rid of it. So, that all seems to be working the way we want. We have a plan. I guess it's just time to start building now. I just need a bit of a build montage. Dun, da, da, da. Da, da, da. Da, 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 da. Ow. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, you've got to have frames to sit the tool printers on. I can work with that. There we go, isn't that neat and tidy? I just re remove the frames and done. Switch on. We're up and running. Oh, okay. How many people spotted that I've got no way of getting stuff into this system? Ah, uh, easy fixed. Maybe I'll just put an input chute just here. Now it should be all done. I have my input feeding got into the system. I've got three sorters for my three printers up top. One more sorter for the output stacker. Uh, I don't use my tool printer very often, so I've just left it down the bottom here, not connected to the system. So, let's give it a try. There it is. If I open that one, it should move into the next one. And there it is. And if I want to print something, they should all arrive down here at the stacker. And here they come. Now with anything, there are pros and cons to it. Now I don't have to move my ingots between my machines. I have a stacker that's hooked up to every single one of them, but all my ingots will now be in one machine. So I cannot now split them between two machines, which means I'll only be able to use one printer at a time. But I usually find that I never really want to use one more, more than one printer at a time, so that's not going to bother me. I've achieved my goals. I don't have to handle ingots anymore. And look how much tidier my base is. Perfect. Until next time, happy building. See ya.